Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for round number 5 of our F1 2015 career mode here with Carlos Sainz Jr and today we are of course brought to Catalonia, the Spanish round of the F1 calendar and that means only one thing for Carlos, it is time for his first home Grand Prix in his F1 career and as you can see there the layout of the Catalonia track in the background, high tyre wear around here so it'll be very much strategic based, there'll be uh, some split strategy I think going on throughout the order but Carlos will be looking to make sure the home fans go home happy, especially with Fernando Alonso struggling in his McLaren at the moment. But in the meantime, before we get into the race at this cloudy looking Catalonia, it is time for the qualifying report. Sebastian Vettel headed Q1 for the first time this season from Lewis Hamilton at a cloudy Catalonia. The shock of the session was Max Verstappen, however, struggling to 18th only. Sebastian Vettel will be quickest yet again in Q2, but more focus was aimed at those eliminated in the session, as Valtteri Bottas could only take 11th place, Fernando Alonso took a solid 13th for McLaren. But in the shootout, Lewis Hamilton took yet another pole from Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen. After bossing qualifying, Sebastian Vettel could only take P4, whilst Carlos Sainz Jr. took a fantastic 6th at his home Grand Prix. So reading from 10th upwards on this grid, Nico Hülkenberg will occupy at row 5 with the Brazilian Felipe Massa after a very disappointing qualifying for Williams. Row 4 is occupied by Felipe Nasa and Daniel Cafiat, with Carlos Sainz taking a fantastic 6th alongside Daniel Ricciardo. Row 2 is occupied by Sebastian Vettel and Nico Rosberg, but it'll be Lewis Hamilton who starts the Spanish Grand Prix on pole from Kimi Raikkonen in 2nd. This series might be about Carlos Sainz Jr, but Toro Rosso aren't the only team on the F1 grid this season. You, you cannot understand how excited I am with the new partnership, the legendary partnership with McLaren and Honda. And to be a part of this new era of McLaren-Honda um, with Fernando Alonso, uh, I'm very excited. We must save fuel, we must target zero. I don't want. I don't want. We're going to have big problems later if we don't. Already I have big problems now. Driving with this and looking like amateur. So I race and then I concentrate the fuel. Very, very disappointed to our fans, to our sponsors. It's a bit of a disaster, to be honest. Hasn't exactly been the greatest of times for McLaren so far this season. No points on the board for them in the first four rounds of this season. But in a contrast in emotions, Carlos Sainz Jr. will start his home Grand Prix from sixth on the grid. An absolutely brilliant qualifying for himself, only doing one lap, meaning he's got very, very fresh tyres. He didn't use a second set in qualifying, so he's actually got a free set of tyres to use if he wants in this Grand Prix, which could mean the conversion over to a three-stopper in this race. Now, of course, the, uh, the, the suggested strategy, as you'll see on the screen, is a two-stopper. Starting on the options, then moving on to the options on lap 10, and then moving on to the primes till the end. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes, but just on a quick side note, I have been running Legend AI since China. I forgot to mention it, uh, but in China we converted to Legend AI, it was uh, Legend for Bahrain, and we're on Legend AI here, so being sixth on the grid is a massive achievement, and Carlos is underway for his home Grand Prix. It's not the greatest of starts, looks as if Danny Kvyat in the, uh, in the Red Bull has gone off to a better start. Ricardo as well in the other Red Bull there has got a good start as well, but signs very, very late on the brakes, actually running into Vettel there momentarily as the two Ferraris go alongside each other. We've actually managed to get around the outside of Daniel Ricardo in that melee, and we're up into fifth place. It's a fantastic start for the Spaniard, but he's got Ricardo in the bigger brother car right behind him, and Sainz has gone wide there down into their hairpin, and look at this fantastic racing, side-by-side -side racing between Ricardo and Sainz here as we go down into turn five, and just hanging it around the outside is Daniel Ricardo. Surely he won't get the traction, he does. Fantastic move from Daniel Ricardo behind Nico Hülkenberg and Danny Kafia are battling. Sebastian Vettel's got the leap on Kimi Räikkönen, who I do believe started second in this race. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I should know, realistically, but I'm fairly sure he didn't. He's down in fourth already, but look at this run Sainz has got on Daniel Ricardo heading towards the end of the back straight. He's going to try and go right around the outside. He locks up, though, breaking very, very late down to this hairpin, looking to... Uh, 
to impress the, the thousands of fans in the stadium section cheering him on. He's the highest Spaniard in the field at the moment, but he hasn't managed to get past Daniel Ricciardo. Ricciardo manages to hold it up the inside after Sainz went a little bit too wide down into the hairpin, and the Spaniard will have to try and be, uh, just try and be careful, think about uh, how he's going to make the move here on the Australian. Obviously, we're only going to go on to lap two now, so there's no assistance at DRS, but both of these cars are powered by Renault. Therefore, they're equally slow in a straight line, so surely just the slipstream and rich fuel mixture will do. As you can see, Sainz breezing past the Australian Ricardo in a straight line, and he's up into fifth position, equaling his best result of the season so far in Australia. And uh, this... This is going well for Sainz at the moment, as you can see, now moving on to lap 4, and the Spaniards actually managing to keep up with Kimi Raikkonen. Raikkonen's dropped off the top 3 of Vettel and the two Mercs slightly since the start of the race, but it's allowed Carlos Sainz here to catch Kimi Raikkonen. The Iceman hasn't had the activation of DRS down the straight, so he's sort of been just a little bit left behind by his teammate and Hamilton and Rosberg in front. Now moving on to lap 5, and Sainz perhaps starting to find it a little bit difficult maybe to get past Kimi Raikkonen. Of course, Raikkonen in a Ferrari-powered Ferrari, it would you know, fairly self-explanatory, is very much quicker in a straight line than the Renault power unit that Sainz has got in the back of his Toro Rosso. But as you can see, coming out of the last corner, Sainz is a lot, lot closer. Going onto the home straight, he's got DRS this time, slipstream, rich fuel mixture, and he is through up into fourth place at his home Grand Prix. This is a stunning performance from Carlos Sainz at the moment, massively outdoing his teammate who only starts 18th in today's Grand Prix. And this is fantastic, battling at the moment with the Ferraris. Now moving on to lap nine, there's a few cars in, well, sorry, one car in the pit lane, and it was Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes. We'll have to see then. He's pitting at the end of lap eight, so we'll have to see whether he goes for a three-stopper or a two-stopper because there are some very much split strategies in this Grand Prix. We're on board though with Felipe Massa, and look how easily... Valtteri Bottas has been able to just literally breeze up the inside. Massa looks as if he's struggling with a lack of power here because his teammate in the same car has just breezed past him and now is breezing away from him down the back straight. Another Renault-powered car, uh, I think Danny Kofiat, is going around the outside of him as well. And there's a bit of contact between them there through the hairpin, but Kavia is going to go right around the outside. Lewis Hamilton stuck behind these guys as well, having just pitted. But Felipe Massa really struggling with a lack of power, very much indicated by Kavia in the Renault-powered Red Bull, which should be a lot slower than the Williams uh, with its Mercedes power unit, uh, just sort of breezing past the Brazilian. Now onto the end of lap 9 and starting lap 10, and Carlos Sainz is in for his first pit stop of the day. This is, I think, a lap before he was meant to pit, but he's come in with the likes of Rosberg and I think Raikkonen came in behind as well, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Jensen Button's continued on his way, he's doing an alternate strategy, he started on the prime tyre, so he's doing a much longer first stint. But um, yeah, Science they're pretty much just coming in to cover off Kimi Raikkonen, who actually pitted the lap before, I do apologise, uh, with Lewis Hamilton, and he's successfully done that. As you can see, down into turn one, exiting the pit lane, we are in 10th position, behind Alonso and the other Toro Rosso of Max Verstappen, but crucially in front of the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen. Now, it sort of forced our hand a little bit in the strategy with, uh, with Raikkonen, sorry, coming in on lap eight. It means we've now actually got to stretch one of our stints a lap longer because we had to cover off Kimi Raikkonen. As you can see though at the end of lap 10, we've managed to catch up with Alonso and Verstappen who are on very old option tyres and going right around the outside of Alonso. If he pulls that off cars, that's a fantastic move around the outside of his fellow compatriot. And now he's right behind Max Verstappen who I think is going to try and dart into the pit lane. There's a bit of contact between the two Toro Rossos and that's held up Sainz massively. Now Kimi Raikkonen right with him. Verstappen wanted to duck into the pit lane but Sainz was just just in the wrong place at the wrong time and massively got held up. As you can see though, just a replay of that move from Carlos Sainz on uh, Alonso. There was a little bit of contact in the second phase of the move, but now you can see Sainz right on the back of Verstappen through the chicane, and he's going to hit the back of Verstappen there as he wants to en uh, sorry, enter the pit lane. Now moving on to lap 11, Fernan uh, sorry, not Fernando Alonso. Well, Fernando Alonso did pit on the last lap, but what I'm trying to say is Sebastian Vettel pitted on the last lap, hence the gap between Sainz and the German. It's quite a lot shorter in this stint of the race because Sainz managed to get an undercut despite being held up by his teammate going through the last corner. Uh, unfortunately, Vettel seems to have a lot more pace than Raikkonen in this race, so it'd be difficult for Sainz to catch up with third place man. But as you can see, we're on board with Verstappen, and we're still making movements through the order in the other Toro Rosso, making a move up the inside of Sergio Perez, who's now falling down the order like an absolute stone, because this is Roman Grosjean, who's now ducking out of the slipstream to make a move up the inside, and through he goes in the Lotus, past the Force India, with his Mercedes power unit in a straight line with the assistance of DRS, and uh, yeah, not looking good for Sergio Perez in terms of pace at the moment. But if there was action going on elsewhere on the track, there really wasn't for Science in this stint. He's still in fourth place. Kimi Raikkonen pitted on the last lap, which was lap 15. 
which means Science is going to have to cover it off because Raikkonen is the man behind. He can't allow Raikkonen to get too much of an undercut, especially when he's in such a fast car in comparison to this Toro Rosso. He might handle the primes a lot better. It looks as if Raikkonen is going to go for a three-stopper, and that now means Science is going to have to do a three-stopper to cover him off too. Ricardo and Bottas go through, now are in the pit lane as well. Raikkonen now coming down the home straight, but it looks as if Science should easily get out in front of the finished driver. And that is the second pit stop of the day, but it's a significant one because it now means that Science has to convert to a three-stopper strategy because obviously these options are not going to go to the end. He's stuck on the set of options that he saved from qualifying though. And now at the end of lap 19, going on to lap 20 with the assistance of DRS and setting the fastest lap of the race. Would you believe in a Toro Rosso? Science absolutely flying and he's flying past Valtteri Bottas, the countryman of Kimi Raikkonen, the man we've had to sort of cover off all day. Science goes a little bit deep into turn one and actually gets a warning for corner cutting through the second part of the chicane. Now moving on to lap 21, there's a car in the pit lane, and that was Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes, or maybe it was... Uh, it was Sebastian Vettel. Not entirely. It might have been Sebastian Vettel, actually. Nico Rosberg, though, has just come out of the pit lane in front of us, which means Lewis Hamilton is now in the lead of this race. But as you can see, Nico Rosberg here, he's very slow out of the pit lane on a cold set of tyres. Science, obviously, with his tyres very much up to temperature and going into turn four, he lunges up the inside of the Mercedes. And who would have thought that would have been happening for Carlos Science in his debut season, making an outright move for position on Nico Rosberg. He's on a different strategy, and he'll probably have to do a pit stop more, Wilson. Science, so this really isn't for net position, but it's a great move nonetheless. Unfortunately, though, Sergio Perez trying to outdo or undo, sorry, all of Science's hard work there by literally parking it on the apex of that quick right hander onto the back straight. It sent Science out wide and uh, and on, onto the gravel. And Perez doing an equally good job now of holding up Nico Rosberg in the Mercedes as well. Moving a few laps later and now on board with Kimi Raikkonen. Sergio Perez in that Force India really going for a full house. He's gone out wide and he's sent Kimi Raikkonen into a series of spins there. The Finns hit the wall on the inside, looking not to rip a wheel off. But Raikkonen hit Perez as he entered back onto the track after going onto the grass. Raikkonen then spins off and as you can see... That is, well, that's Raikkonen's chance of a podium already passing Science gone completely. And that takes the pressure now off the Spaniard. He can pit now, knowing that the only man really who can stop him in terms of position is Daniel Ricciardo. And given Ricciardo's already pitted for the last time, Science is now pitting for the last time to go on to the primes. And there's no sign of Ricciardo. This looks as if it's going to be a very, very easy end to the race for Carlos Science in taking fourth here as we, enter, as we exit sorry, the pit lane on lap 24. Meanwhile, for another driver who's having a home race at this Grand Prix, it's uh, it's a slightly more complex scenario for Roberto Meri in the manor. I can't be serious about this. I can't I can't put FOM graphics on. This is just plain stupid. Will Stevens appears to be the sufferer of this glitch because he's stuck in the pit lane and the crew are refusing to work on his car. I just don't know what's going on at Manor. It's some sort of strategic sort of some sort of strategic failure there, really. Uh, not serving Will Stevens and sending Mary out without a set of tyres. But he seems to be doing alright without them. Maybe that's a new tyre compound for the future. But nevertheless, we're on board now with Felipe Nazar. And that is an engine giving up in front of us. And it belongs to Fernando Alonso, the Spaniard at his home Grand Prix. We saw the feature about McLaren at the start of the race. And it just isn't getting much better for McLaren Honda. That partnership still not yielding any rewards, only yielding some exploded engines. And unfortunately, with four laps to go, Fernando Alonso is out of his home Grand Prix. But that now leaves Carlos Sainz to lock up at the end of the back straight. But it doesn't matter to him. Lewis Hamilton has already won the race. But the real story here is Carlos Sainz Jr. is, a, is only a few corners away from taking his best finish in Formula 1. He's a debutant this season, this is his rookie season, and already, in just his fifth Grand Prix in Formula 1, he is one place away from getting a podium, and what a place to do it. Carlos Sainz Jr. rounds the final corner to take an incredible fourth at his home Grand Prix. What an absolutely astonishing performance from Carlos Sainz in the Toro Rosso, the highest finishing three-stopper in the field. No one else managed to make it work. Raikkonen, the next highest down in 10th place, just about denying Sainz's teammate Max Verstappen of taking points. He finishes 11th, but in the end, it's Hamilton to win the race from Rosberg, Vettel, Carlos Sainz in fourth, and Daniel Ricciardo rounding out the top five. What a result. What a Grand Prix for Sainz at his home Grand Prix. 
The registered only retirement was Alonso, but Will Stevens being nine laps down meant he really wasn't classified either. Here is how, though, this affects the championship. And look at the top four. Vettel, one point in front of Rosberg, who's one point in front of Hamilton. And then only seven points back from the leader is fourth place man Raikkonen, who started the weekend top of the table. So Raikkonen has dropped from first to fourth, but there's only seven points covering the top four. A fantastic result for Sainz as well. He now moves closer to both of the Williams drivers, Valtteri Bartas and Felipe Massa in the championship as well, as now starting to gallop away from Felipe Nasser, who didn't take any points this Grand Prix. Mercedes are now top of the Constructors' Championship by, uh, by four points in front of Ferrari. Then it's Red Bull, Will no, sorry, Williams, in fact, Red Bull and Toro Rosso, but what a Grand Prix that, in fact, was. Just another side note as well, we saw the, the feature about McLaren at the start of this video. I'll be hoping to do a lot more sort of edits and intros to do with other teams as well, to give it sort of a broader aspect when it comes to the actual the grid, as opposed to just being about Carlos Sainz. But Jensen Button managed to get his first points of the season and McLaren's first points of the season, getting a very, very, very good seventh place. So massive, massive well done to Jensen Button. Hats off to him. It was a good weekend for him too. Unfortunately, his teammate, though, unable to finish the race at his home Grand Prix. But I hope you did enjoy that round of F1 2015 at Carimo. Next up, we are at Monaco, which should provide some absolutely crazy racing. Feel free to leave a like if you did enjoy this video. Though, uh, subscribe if you're new around here. But 50 likes yet again would be absolutely awesome. And I will try and release the next next episode within the next five days. It has been a pleasure though ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.